Okay, welcome to session three, using the dictionary. So before we said it was not necessary to be looking at, at the words at a dictionary every time you didn't understand a word. However, sometimes it is important to use them. Let me tell you a little bit about my experience uh, with the use of the dictionary. At first, I remember I learned to use a dictionary as a tool to look for the definition of, uh, of a word. However, as time passed by, I discovered a whole new world inside a dictionary. And that's basically what I would like to share with you today. So in a dictionary, um, we can find the spelling of a word, the pronunciation, inflections, parts of speech, the definition, usage labels, etymology, and syllables. Let's take a look at all of this in a more detailed way. Well, first of all, we need to understand that um, every single word in a dictionary, it's called entry word. And after the entry word, you will find different information that will be very helpful. You can find the pronunciation in between parentheses. Uh, you can also find the part of speech, um, if there are other forms of the word the different meanings because you can find, as you see on the screen, you can see one, two, and three. It's because one word can have three different definitions, okay? So, or three different meanings. So let's see um, how it works. Let's move on. Fortunately, right now we have access to online dictionaries. So this is a great advantage because we can even just click on the, speaker icon and you will get the correct pronunciation. Something that you will find is that we might find uh, British and American uh, pronunciation. This isn't a mistake. Uh, it, it's important that you know you could find both of them and um, be open to this possibility in different texts. Okay, so if you see a word written in a different way, it might be uh, written in British or in American English. Now, let's see what guide words are. So maybe um, you have wondered why when you open the dictionary, you'll find on the top corner of the dictionary two little words over there. They're called guide words. And basically what they do is that um, they guide us in order to know which are the words in that page. So if you see here, the first guide word tells what the first word on the page is, right? So you can find it uh, there. And then the second guide word tells what the last word is on the page. Okay, so there it is. Basically, that's uh, their objective. All the word all the word entries on the page fall alphabetically between the two guide words. Now, what else can we learn from a dictionary entry? Well, we can learn um, spelling and syllables. So you get to see um, how to spell it correctly and also how many syllables the word uh, has. Um, we might find this um, separated by, well, there are dots. If you see, there are dots separating the word and those are uh, the symbols that help us to see where you need to divide the word uh, by syllables. Um, for example, in the entry for this respect, the word is divided into three syllables, okay? This respect. And, um, in order to check if we're understanding, let's see uh, these examples. For example, how many syllables are in each of these words? We have the word donate, compensate, and obedient. Well, number one has two syllables, number two has three syllables, and um, number three has four syllables, okay? Now, another aspect that we can uh, discover in a dictionary will be the pronunciation symbols and accent marks. Um, in a dictionary entry, uh, the information in parentheses shows you the pronunciation of a word. So it is important that you have in mind two 
important concepts. One will be the pronunciation symbols and then the accent marks. How do they work? Let's see. First of all, if you have a new dictionary, make sure you look for the pronunci pronunciation symbols in your dictionary. Every single dictionary has its own uh, pronunciation symbols, okay? So, don't expect that my pronunciation symbols from my dictionary are going to be the same as yours. That's why it's important that you go check and um, in here what you would find it's a symbol that has a word that it's the reference so you will know what is the correct sound in case you see it in the parenthesis I told you before. So, for example, look uh, what happens over here. Um, in the word disrespect, oh, sorry. Um, we can see that uh, there are different, well, letter I sounds um, like the word in sit, and the second E is pronounced like the E in ten. That's why we need pronunciation symbols in a dictionary. So. I recommend you to learn how to read them. And then we have the accent marks and basically what they do is that they help us to see where the accent or which syllable it's stressed, okay? Now sometimes here, um, the line after the T, if you see, it's darker than the previous one. Well, what does that mean? That it's um, strong, it is stronger, it stresses it stronger than the first syllable, okay? Then we can also, well, let's see, here I have some examples, for example, the word machine, and according to this, the stress, or the strongest um, syllable is uh, the second one, in detergent will be the second one, in information, the third one, in Valentine will be the first, and in alphabetical will be the third syllable, okay? Then we go to parts of speech. This is a very important part of an entry word in a dictionary. We need to know what part of speech uh, we're dealing with, if it's a noun, if it's a verb, okay? Usually, you'll find them in italics. So here it's a, a, an example. You get to see the entry word, um, the, uh, the pronunciation in parentheses, and right after you see a letter N. You will always uh, find the uh, parts of speech abbreviated, okay? So in this case, will be a noun, and also we have a V for, uh, for a verb. Now, let me show you. These are the most common abbreviations for parts of speech. So get familiarized with them. Uh, and next time that you see them, you'll know uh, what they refer to. We can also find inflections, and this is sometimes we're looking for a word, and we, we're like, oh, I cannot find the word new in the dictionary. Well, why not? Because what you will find in the dictionary is the simple form of the word. Um, all the other spellings and the regular way to write them, you'll find them after the entry word. So don't look for plurals in a dictionary or for past tense in a dictionary because you won't find them, okay? That's a, an important tip. Then, um, usu usu usage um, labels. Let me tell you that this is also very important because it helps you to understand better the use of the word. It could be an idiom, so now you know, um, like, its meaning. Also, if you are in a lecture, you won't use a slang word, so it is important that you know that. Also, in which areas or context will you use the word? Synonyms and antonyms will help you a lot in order to understand the meaning of a word, and um, you will also find examples in which they use, let's say they use the word into a sentence and that give us context, okay? And it's easier to understand. Finally, it's important to bear in mind that you should not look up every single word you read. This is like stopping in a race. You lose your warming up, 
If you need to use your dictionary, let it be for a good reason, okay? Um, so important, as we told you before, use the context. And if you can't find it out, then use the dictionary. This was the consulted source. And let me give you this quote, read, travel, read, ask, read, learn, read, connect, and read. Thanks for your attention. And now let's move on to our last session related to critical thinking.